All right, so hi everyone. Thank you to the organizers for having me. It's a pleasure to speak here. In this talk, um, I'd like to present on recent progress in the study of branching Brownian motion in dimensions two and higher. In particular, we study the extremal process of branching Brownian motion, which has received a lot of attention for reasons I'll explain soon. Um, the new results here will be based on two works, one with Al Lubetsky and Ofer Zaytuni, and another forthcoming work with Al Ofer, Julian Beristicki, and Bastian Mala. Great. So for clarity, let's define the branching Brownian motion model in RD. I'll often just say BBM for, instead of branching Brownian motion for brevity. So we start with a single particle at the origin, um, and the particle moves according to d-dimensional Brownian motion, so IID Brownian motion in each coordinate. And I'll usually write a superscript V or U to denote a particle, and the X superscript V uh, denotes the, um, the path of V, the Brownian motion path. So each particle carries with it an alarm clock that rings with rate one. And at the time it rings, the particle splits into two particles, which then move around according to independent Brownian motions in RD. And um, after they split, they also carry exponential alarm clocks and the process repeats. So here's a simulation of 2D uh, BBM run until the system size hits 10,000. And we'll be interested in the particles with large moduli. So the colors are assigned according to moduli. And on the right is a plot of the modulus of each particle on the left as a function of time. OK, so to fix some notation, I'll write nt to denote the set of particles at time t. And um, I already explained this, but just as a reminder, x superscript v means the Brownian motion path of the particle v. OK, so to motivate the study of branching Brownian motion, I want to mention that BBM has served as an important model in the study of log-correlated fields, uh, especially in their extrema. And on the screen, I've listed some of the areas that have been informed by BBM. And I'll point out also that an important idea from physics underlying this whole study is that the extrema of log correlated fields should resemble the well understood extrema of IID random variables, which follow, for instance, the classical extreme value distributions. Okay. So we're interested in the extremal particles of BBM, so the collection of particles with the largest modulus. So we'll start a discussion with the maximum and uh, with dimension one results. So uh, in general, I'll write RT star to denote the maximum modulus of the system at time T. So in dimension one, the extremal processes have been studied extensively, starting with Maury Bramson, who was able to compute the centering term MT of one. So one for dimension one, of course. Um, so here it is, root two T with a log correction. And he showed that the recentered maximum will converge in law via connections with PDEs. So I just want to point out that the centering term has leading order that matches the uh, maximum of the IID case, uh, while the second order term uh, is slightly lower. It's minus 3 over 2 root 2 log t instead of the usual 1 over 2 root 2 log t. Uh, okay, so still this description is a bit unsatisfactory because we would like to compare the limit with one of the classical distributions from IID extreme value theory. And this is the work of Lolly and Selke, who identified the limiting law as a randomly shifted gumbel. So uh, here's the theorem. In the theorem statement, we see that the limiting distribution function on the left-hand side is given by e to the minus e to the minus something, where we see this random shift uh, in terms of some random variable z. So this random variable is itself a important limiting object. It's called the derivative martingale. And it's constructed as the almost sure limit of some functional of the branching Brownian motion at time t. So uh, I just call it here zt. Um, and in fact, Lolly and Selke's construction of z shows that this random shift is coming from whatever behavior is observed in the initial particles. So somehow the initial behavior uh, actually changes the picture. And we'll discuss this in, in more detail later on. So the next question to ask is, what about the extremal point process? So let's take the point process of norms recentered by MT of one. So remember, this is the centering for the maximum. And so almost all of the points in ET will be sent to minus infinity. So uh, the only points that are retained are those that stay uh, within constant order of the maximum. And so this limit was identified uh, independently by these two groups uh, listed here on the screen. 
and both describe the limit as a randomly shifted decorated Poisson point process. So what is this exactly? Um, well, I have some illustration. So let's start with a Poisson point process with um, this intensity here. And so I drew in color some Poisson points. And now each point gets shifted to the right by log of the derivative martingale, so log z. And now each Poisson point has a point process attached to it. Um, so this is what's called the decoration point process. So uh, here I've just drawn the decoration for a single Poisson point. So this point process is supported on uh, negative infinity comma zero. Uh, so the points appear to the left of the Poisson point and it actually has an explicit description, but uh, it's omitted here. Um, and so the decoration for each Poisson point is IAD. And here I've drawn the full process with uh, lots of colors and the decorations colored the same as a corresponding Poisson point. Okay, so this describes the entire extremal process. And the last thing I'll say about dimension one is that there has been continuous progress on more specific features of the BBM extrema that I won't discuss today. So in dimensions two and higher, there hasn't been much progress until recently. And the first question we should ask ourselves is, does the maximum modulus converge in distribution after some recentering where the recentering term needs to be computed? And further, um, in the spirit of this log correlated philosophy, can we again identify the limiting law as some perturbation of a classical extreme value distribution? So the answer to all of these turns out to be yes. And this is the main result of the recent work of myself, Al, and Ofer. So again, we see a centering that's like root two t plus a dimensional constant times log as the second order. And the limiting law turns out to be uh, a randomly shifted gum bell. So again, e to the minus oh, um, e to the minus e to the minus something. And the, the shift is coming from this random variable, which we call z infinity. Z infinity is the analog of the derivative martingale in d dimensions. Um, though with some important distinctions. And um, this random shift is itself some limiting object. So on the screen at the bottom, you see what was previous no previously known. Uh, in 1995, Biggins obtained the leading order term. And uh, in 2015, uh, Milan was computed the, uh, the, the correct centering term and showed that after recentering, we have a tight sequence of random variables. So in this paper, uh, we actually didn't construct Z infinity as a measurable function of the branching Brownian motion. Um, and because of this, it's a bit hard to give a rigorous interpretation of what Z infinity really is and where it's coming from. But actually this issue was resolved in some forthcoming work that I'm going to focus on next. So at the top of the screen here is a result of the lolly selke type that I mentioned earlier, but this time for any dimension. And the idea here is we condition on some fixed time L then send t to infinity, and we're looking at RT star uh, recentered. And then after we send t to infinity, we send L to infinity. So from the perspective of t, L is just some constant. It's large, but it's some fixed constant. And what we end up with on the right-hand side is a limiting random variable that's exactly what was inside the expectation on the previous slide here. Um, okay, so the correct interpretation of this is as follows. Uh, what this means is that Z infinity is really built from the behaviors of the particles up to time T. And so somehow the behavior of the particles from the beginning of the tree permanently shift the maximum. And this is what's depicted here in this really nice image of Eric Rune. In the left, we see that the initial particle swerved to the left and also didn't branch too much. And so we actually have a permanent negative shift in the maximum. Uh, here, the dotted line is supposed to be like MT. In the right-hand side, um, the opposite happened, and so you can observe a right shift. Um, yeah, and so that concludes the discussion of the maximum process. And now the next results will concern the entire extremal point process. So as a first step towards the extremal point process, let's just consider the angle of the furthest particle at time t. So theta t star is what we'll call that angle. And note that by rotational symmetry, it's easy to see that its distribution was just going to be uniform in the sphere. But in the spirit of, spirit of Lolly and Selke, one might expect a limiting result of this type to hold. So you observe the tree at time L, and then take the limit as t goes to infinity, and then send L to infinity. 
And the question is, do we have some limiting random measure and what does it look like? How does it relate to the derivative martingale? Now, for any theta in the sphere, um, the projection of our BBM onto theta is just going to be one dimensional BBM, of course. And so there's an associated angular derivative martingale with this direction theta. So it'll be constructed as the limit of some, some, some functional ZL of theta, and we'll call it Z infinity of theta. And for each theta, we have an almost sure limit. And the conjecture of Staszynski, Beristicki, and Milan in 2020 is that mu should have a density proportional to Z infinity of theta. So um, towards this, they were able to show that almost surely on a uh, random set of the sphere of full measure, this angular derivative martingale converges. Um, and furthermore, viewed as a measure on the sphere, ZL of theta converges weakly to Z infinity of theta, D theta. So D theta is just Lebesgue. Okay, so with this background, I can now state the full convergence results for the extremo point process. So this is joint work with uh, Al Ofer, uh, Julien Bersicki, and Vincent Malin. Um, so, so we considered the point process via its polar decomposition, angle and radius, and in accordance. Um, okay, so this is a point process on the sphere times r plus, and. Uh, Indeed, we see a decorated Poisson point process in accordance with this law correlated philosophy. So, okay, what's this Poisson point process? The intensity is given here. So note that the angular intensity is described uh, by this limiting Z infinity of theta D theta measure. And um, for the decorations, it turns out that the decorations appear only in the norm process. So in particular, the, ang the angles don't have any decorations. And uh, the decorations turn out to just be the same ones from one dimensional branching boundary motion. Okay, so to conclude with some final remarks, this uh, description was conjectured in that same paper of Stasinski, Berstiki, and Malat, uh, mentioned on the previous slide. And um, also mentioned that a key step towards the proof was uh, being able to analyze this uh, limiting measure Z infinity theta D theta very precisely. And in particular, we identified the full measure um, this integral here with the random shift that we saw in the law of the d-dimensional maximal process. Uh, so this is what we call just the infinity with no theta. Um, okay, so that's all I have to say. Thanks a lot.